Welcome to the EKG Guy, if this is your first time. We're glad you could join us, and welcome back if you're returning. So we're going through our EKG uh, coding reference guide, and we're now in our AV junctional rhythm, so we're going through those uh, sections. So that's this section here, part two, okay? We've gone through our general features in P-wave abnormalities and atrial abnormalities. Uh, and if you want access to the coding reference guide, what you wanna do is put this in your search bar, search that into your email address. Then you want to click submit here. Okay. And from there, you'll get an email. And on that email, there will be a link for access to the coding reference guide. And that's what you'll get here. Okay. So then you'll come to this and you'll see that if you want to go back and listen to the uh, other lectures, you can certainly do that. We're in this rhythm. So we've gone through different sinus rhythms. Uh, we're now in AV junctional rhythms. And uh, we will look at AV junctional rhythm in this lecture. So let's get started. All right, so let's look at AV junctional rhythms, okay? So again, let's review our anatomy using our box diagrams, okay, to simplify things. So imagine this is your heart, this is your right atrium, your left atrium, your right ventricle, and left ventricle. Remember, we have our sinus node up here high in the right atrium. So this is your sinus node. From your sinus node, you have these internodal pathways that go to an AV node. Then you have your His bundle, which then gives off this right bundle branch. Okay. Then you have your left bundle branch, and that gives off an anterior and posterior fascicle, left anterior fascicle, and left posterior fascicle. Okay. From the fascicles in the bundle branch, they go to the ventricular Purkinje fibers, and then that's how the impulse spreads. And you have a Bachmann bundle that goes over here to the left atrium. Okay. So what we're focusing on with these AV junctional rhythms are rhythms originating from this region here. Now remember that if that's going to happen, there must be something above that may be going array or wrong, okay? That the rhythm here is originating from that. So maybe there's a sinus node dysfunction or block or something, and that's why the AV node is taking over. It's acting as a safety net. Remember, the sinus intrinsic rate of the sinus node is between 60 and 100 beats per minute, okay, in adults. In the AV junctional region, it's between 40 and 60 beats per minute. And then here in the ventricles, it's between 20 and 40 beats per minute. So why is that important? Well, it's important because when we start to differentiate these junctional rhythms, so if we say our junctional rhythms, they are differentiated based on the ventricular rate. So if you have one less than 40 beats per minute, we call that a junctional bradycardia, okay? Because it's less than the intrinsic rate. If it's between 40 and 60 beats per minute, okay, which is the intrinsic rate of it, this is a junctional rhythm. And as you can see, that is what we're discussing here, these AV junctional rhythms, meaning the normal rate of it, okay? If you have one that's between 60 and 100 beats per minute, we call this an accelerated junctional rhythm, okay? And then over 100 beats per minute, we call that a junctional tachycardia, okay? And our focus in this one is here, this junctional rhythm, the normal intrinsic rate, and that's why we call it a junctional rhythm. So let's look at this. It's supposed to be a typically regular narrow QRS complex, okay, less than 120 milliseconds. Now remember that our QRS complex, if we draw this out, imagine this is your P wave QRS complex, and T wave, your QRS complex width is from beginning to end, and it should be less than 120 milliseconds or three small boxes. Okay, so let's just erase that. And now what we're saying is that normally the width, okay, of this should be less than 120 milliseconds, but it could be wider if you have any aberrant conduction going on before or some pre-existing interventricular conduction delay. So anything disturbing down here in the lower pathway. Now, the ventricular rate, we said, dictates the name of that junctional rhythm. All right, remember, less than 40 is junctional bradycardia. Between 40 and 60 beats per minute is our junctional rhythm. And then 60 to 100, accelerated junctional rhythm, and over 100, junctional tachycardia, as in any other tachycardia. So as long as you remember them and you just kind of want to keep reinforcing them, you'll, you'll be able to, they'll stick, okay? Now, because the rhythm is originating from here, you can imagine 
that conduction will come downward, down the normal conduction pathway, and may also go backwards, retrogradely. And because it can go retrogradely, you may see a QRS complex, which forms here, as well as a P wave that goes retrogradely. Now, the P wave won't have a normal axis because it's going in the opposite direction. Normally, it comes this way, downwards. Now, if you imagine, now it's going backwards, it may have a opposite. So you may see actually inverted P waves in those inferior leads as it goes away from it, or it may simply be buried in the QRS complex or even absent, okay? So let's look at an example here. So we have a junctional rhythm shown in this EKG, and notice here is lead two. Notice you have no P waves that are coming before these, okay? Nothing before. So normally we would see a P wave here, but they are not occurring in any of these, all right? So notice that the rhythm is regular, okay? There's not an irregular rhythm, meaning from one Q R wave to the next, we call that an R to R interval. All these intervals between are the same in duration, okay? The intervals are the same, and that's why it's a regular, okay? Notice also this is a narrow QRS complex or whatever the underlying uh, or pre-existing uh, QRS complex would have been is typically there. And then we have to find the rate. Remember that from beginning all the way to the end of the standard 12 lead ECG is 10 seconds. If you multiply that by 6, you get 60 seconds, which is 1 minute. And so what you want to do is simply count the complexes going across, multiply that by 6, and you'll get an estimate in beats per minute, okay? So if we did that here, we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 times 6 is 48, and as you can see, that 48 falls within that range, okay? That 40 to 60 beats per minute, which is this one here, the AV junctional rhythm. And that's pretty much how you would do that. So you'd notice that there's no P waves, and you have these regular rhythm, and then you also have a rate that helps differentiate which type of junctional rhythm you have going on here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Again, originating from that junctional region, okay, from maybe some sinus node dysfunction, it has a rate, that intrinsic rate, between 40 and 60 beats per minute, okay, and that's how you differentiate these junctional rhythms. Remember, less than 40, junctional bradycardia, between 40 and 60 beats per minute is the junctional rhythm that we're discussing here, and then 60 to 100 is the accelerated junctional rhythm, and over 100, junctional tachycardia, all of which we will get to. All right, and so that's the ventricular rate that helps distinguish it. And remember that the P wave is absent, may be buried within the QRS complex, or you may see an inverted P waves in those inferior leads as it goes away from the normal conduction, going away from that AV node and going retrogradely to activate the atrium. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already.
Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.